Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Aditya Kumar, I, as Mike introduced. I'm IoT lead solution designer for Vodafone IoT, mainly focusing on the identity and access management for the IoT platform. I'm here to talk about a case study, IoT needs IAM, the importance of centralized IAM in, in a growing IoT ecosystem. So this case study is based on my experience, so hopefully you will find it useful. Agenda, very quickly, I'll just give a brief on what IoT is, followed by Vodafone IoT. And next, I will touch base on why do we need IAM in IoT, the challenges which we faced, and the main reason for implementing IAM in a mature IoT ecosystem. Strategy, solution, which we selected. Finally, I will give some brief on what benefits which we have achieved and also a glimpse into our future work. So let's start with IoT. IoT is not a buzzword anymore. The quality of human life is improving every day with the vast implementation of IoT. So we have IoT technology includes smart home, smart health, smart waste management, smart vehicle, everything. IoT technology introduces network of everything. A um, bit more on IoT. So let's say your coffee maker talking to your refrigerator, milk's finished, time to refill, or your fitness tracker syncing with the thermostat. After gym workout, maybe the body temperature is a bit on the higher side, cool it down in a, in a slow way. So, yeah, Internet of Things makes this reality, connecting devices, objects, living, living beings. Each element boasts a unique identifier which enables them to orchestrate intelligent actions, connect to different devices, and, and, and control, monitor everything across our life. Coming back to the Vodafone IoT, so Vodafone IoT currently provides more than 175 million IoT connectivity across the world. So if you see the monthly data uses just on the IoT sims, it is 5 million gigabytes. These are just IoT data. The biggest live customer has got 15 million sims. So with this such a vast scale platform, we needed to modernize our approach to IAM which will safeguard us and, of, and also provide more business opportunities for us to go to different enterprises or consumers. So this presentation is mainly about how Vodafone approached this problem and how we designed and developed the entire IAM framework inside the mature IoT platform. So coming back to the risk what all risks are included in, are, are possible in IoT. So currently we have roughly 8 million devices across the world, IoT devices. Some of the riskiest ones are medical devices, networking e equipments, and they, they cater to 60% of the risk. And these devices can be exploited to steal data, spread malware, or launch various attacks. So these are some of the examples on how attackers can exploit weaknesses in any IoT devices. Weak passwords, you can see the list. I'm not going to go much detail into, into all of those, but yeah, kind of complete list. So we learned about IoT. We learned about risk associated to it. Time for some introspection. So we, we, we thought we, we did reflect on, reflected on our own thoughts. We thought, where do we need to go in a in few years? So we kind of created a security 2020 agenda, and we started working towards it. So the first step is implementing a strong, secure, and user-friendly IAM in the mature IoT ecosystem. Also, uh, yes, so user experience-wise, so we needed to provide single sign-on 
to have pers for the user to have a personalized experience and also which will comply the various data privacy regulations on security aspect aspect we have authentication authorization mfas we have been seeing various talks about mfas risk based authentication context based authentication device identity management these are all parts of the security aspe aspect of iam now we so we thought, we have agreed on implementing a iam in our iot ecosystem but this is what we had platform was more than 10 years old and with continuous growth of iot we were adding multiple features multiple components every time and this makes this entire iot platform much much more complex again a bit more detail on the challenges so as i said platform was more than 10 year 10 years old um, different features we were adding different features continuous demand from businesses the all these components all the local components so they were doing local authentication and they had no no centralized access to any centralized idm now all these different solutions they also had different authorization models which was again not centralized no federation any user any uh, any user or any um, i would say contractors or permanent employees leaving vodafone but there was there was no there was absolutely no process of offboarding so they still existed into the system they can still access the iot platform there was no single sign on uh, for example a switch between any business application business portals still required user to log in and potentially with a different password as well so these were some of the challenges which we had so we thought of implementing identity and access management but we needed to identify an identity server provider we cannot start from scratch we cannot build the iam on our own mean mean strategy of identifying this this uh, identity server provider was which can enforce the entire user authentication user identity end to end across all channels all the components to use this centralized idm as as master for the user identity preferences permissions the centralized author authorization model which will have all the roles defined for 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 a particular user or for for a particular role so permissions defined for a particular role and that role assigned to a user uh, we needed to simplify single sign on and federation federation with other idps so that's that's the that's the real key part for for our strategy uh, we created this roadmap uh, created a roadmap of 3 years which was well achieved so uh, yeah solution wise so we needed to create this centralized iam by refactoring the entire existing iot platform so the first step was to create an identity and access management architecture framework which will include authentication protocols like saml oidc or to it should also include multi pack multi factor authentication including adaptive authentication multi factor authentic authentication can be of different types sms otp or totp identity federation uh, we needed to include we needed to integrate various customers with their own idps rather than us storing the user data in our platform single sign on we had like multiple portals and any user going from one portal to different portal he has to sign in again so we needed we needed to simplify the single sign on we needed to create centralized authorization model as well and obviously we we would need to have a geo redundant iam solution so which can integrate and also it can integrate with with consumers oem car manufacturers and i think uh, in one of the yesterday's panel i mentioned we had integrated with roughly 25 oems already so this was like big task for us 
So we identified WS2 as our partner to, to build this centralized IAM by using their WS2 IS, identity server. Um, they had lots of plus points which were aligned to our strategy. Um, they were open source. They are quite, um, they are security up to date, quite user friendly, quite easy to use. They provide lots of really good customization option. For us, customization was really important because we had different user, different partners coming up with their own brands. They wanted their own brands to be present, not, not the Vodafone brand. So all these customization option was really important for us. So that's where we chose WS2. Um, we also had huge requests, multiple requests coming in from different customers. Someone wants to have just SMS as the second, second factor authentication, but other wants to have the TOTP. He cannot receive SMS in his, in his own uh, country or in his own region. The others are, they cannot, they cannot have MFA or TOTP installed onto their phone because the phones can be a very, very simple one just for calls and SMS. So that's where we needed to have everything available for the customers. They can use anything they want to. So traditional IAM was, is, is kind of simple, but IoT IAM is slightly complicated. Uh, we, needed to, we needed to trust the data which is also, which is generated by these IoT devices as well. Because running analytics on the data collected, if you're not sure, if you're not sure if they are true or they are secure, it won't make, make much sense. So we also, we also needed to have public key infrastructure, PKIs, to provide digital certificates to, to this growing number of IoT devices. So yeah, coming to the benefits, uh, we improved this, we have improved security a lot. The cybersecurity baseline score, which was pre WS2, pre-centralized IAM, it was 2.4 out of a scale of four. Uh, we achieved four uh, three months back, so now we are totally compliant. This led to us to integrate with multiple OEM car manufacturers. Uh, we have 24 already, and these are quite big names. So the entire Volkswagen group, Audi, Porsche, Volvo, Stellantis, multiple Chinese manufacturers as well, um, Zeker, GWM, Great Wall Motors. Uh, there are a few more. So we have like roughly 11 or 12 in pipeline where we have to add them as well. Also, having, having the centralized IM, we, we, we are complying with various data privacy regulations as well. GDPR was one. Complying with data privacy regulations, we, we as a company, as a Vodafone, we needed to, we needed to we needed to follow that policy so that in case of any security breaches, the risks of fine are also reduced, and also to protect the rep organization reputation. Journey ahead, uh, cloud native, that's, that's our preference now. The organizations, everyone is now going to cloud. So cloud-based IAM, they are increasingly popular at the moment. So Cloud-based IAM, it provides multiple benefits, scalability, flexibility, and also cost effectiveness. And the scalability here is really vital because we tend to integrate multiple vendors, onboard partners, and having a scalable IAM solution helps us in doing this integration quite fast. Um, OEM integration, so IDPs, federation with the IDPs, so in this IDP identity federation, IDP vouches for the, for the authentication of the user, whereas service provider provides these services. So I think I have touched base this yesterday, but I'll do it again. Um, so let's say a user wants to access a service from a service provider. The service provider delegates the authentication to IDP so that the service provider does not have to store any user credential. 
what what it will have it will only have the permissions assigned to the role for that user and this was uh, and this is what our our journey is going forward as well any new oems or any new customer it can be b2b it can be b2c it can be b2b2c as well and by by that we are we are we are increasing our security uh, baseline as well uh, ai and ml artificial intelligence and machine learning we are trying to include or introduce much of ai into into our user provisioning roles permissions ai and ml can also be used to identify so artificial intelligence can also be used to identify any uh, any secure security attacks and we can use machine learning to to use to use this these data to learn from past and and be ready for what we can um, do it in future also there are lots of features which i have seen yesterday coming in on on the wso2 is you can use ai to create lots of new adaptive authentication scripts even we have uh, we are using adaptive authentication scripts those are quite complex um, so that's where the challenge comes in the customers the users they wanted to have variety of everything they cannot they are not so they cannot show everything to everywhere so that's where the ai ai part would come in including the creation of those adaptive authentication script uh, yeah i think yes so this is my last slide uh, it's it's the philosophy which i always uh, refer from the american philosopher ralph waldo emerson it's not the destination it's the journey similarly i am is is also not a destination it is the journey um, i think that's all from my side thank you when the questions <laughs>